celebrate the solemnity of the Christ the King, Christ the Universal King, Christ the King of all hearts, Christ the King of the world. But he is a servant king, not a ruler king. He is the king who came to appeal to people, to persuade people. He is the king that invites people, not the king that commands and rules and drives people. Remember at the beginning of his life, the three wise men that came from the east looking for him, when they came to the house of Herod, their question was, where is he born, the king of the Jews? And again, remember when they visited him in the manger, they prostrated themselves, and one of the gifts they offered him was the gift of gold, a gift meant for kings. And again, he describes himself as one who came to serve and not to be served. He came to give his life as a ransom for many. That's the kind of king we are talking about. The king that rules in our hearts. There is this story told by Soren Kierkegaard, a theologian and a philosopher that lived in Denmark over 150 years ago. He told of the story of a king who fell in love with a peasant girl and wanted to marry the peasant girl. But we know kings do not marry from peasants, they marry from royalty. How was the king to marry this peasant girl? He thought of so many things. He thought of resigning relinquishing his post as a king and becoming an ordinary person. But he said to himself, what if the girl refuses to marry me because she no longer admires me? He said, no, I must marry this girl. That's where the story ends. The storyteller did not tell us how the story ended. He just stopped there. This is a wonderful king, a powerful king, who had power over life and death, who had power over everything and everybody. But he was thinking how to marry a peasant girl. The question is, why did not the story end? Why hang it up there? Who thinks, who knows? What do you think about the story? Why do you think it just ended there without a conclusion? What do you think? Eh? Because the story has not ended, that's why it stopped there. The story is about God and us. It's about Jesus and us. That the end of the story depends on you and I. The end of the story depends on you and I. Your relationship with God, my relationship with God, my response to Christ and your response to Christ. That's how the story will end. And the story will end differently for each and every one of us. Remember again in the book of Revelation, Christ says, I stand and knock at the door. Whoever opens the door for me, I will come in and dine with him. He appeals to us. If we respond to his love over us, if we answer him when he calls us, if we open the door when he's around, our story with him continues. But if we lock our doors, if we refuse to open, then it's a different thing altogether. Think of what Jesus did. 
Paul tells us in the letter to the Philippians that even though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself and took the human nature and accepted death on a cross like a common criminal. That's what he did for you and I. What is our response to this? Again, the response depends on you and I, what we do. Whether we appreciate what he has done for us. Whether we respond wholeheartedly to him. Whether we invite him in. Whether we are ready to tangle with him. So I will also end this story handily. I will hang it there. It's for each and every one of us to ask himself or herself, how will my story end? How will this love affair between God and me end? What is my role in bringing this love affair to a successful conclusion? What do I do? to make sure I profit from this love overture by God? How do I respond effectively to Christ's invitation to love Him as He has loved us? <laughs>